call to order this meeting of the Plain Township Board of Trustees. Everybody will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of course, we do have the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections by fellow board members? Or department heads at this time? Yes, Mr. President, I have an addition to new business, and it's the Air Ryan Corporation. Do we have any other adjustments? Okay, no, no further changes. The agenda will stand as amended and presented. Um, for the record, we do have a, a 615 public hearing for the alternative tax budget. So where we're at in the meeting for anybody here attending tonight should you wonder why we're diverting from our official meeting to a tax hearing it's something we have to do on an annual basis so uh, that being said the sheriff's report i'm going to turn that over to detective Cohen. good evening everyone i think it should be the uh june 2016 monthly report from the sheriff's office um, we showed a 15% increase with uh, 1,145 calls for service. Uh, crashes down slightly uh, with 56, and our crashes with injury were actually significantly high um, for June. Uh, alarms were exactly the same as last year, 131, and um, traffic stops and citations, uh, respectively, was a 22% increase with 134 traffic stops. And 112 citations, uh, 23 total arrests, um, and in addition to what I guess our deputies did for the month, uh, Sergeant Klein and I and uh, a couple other deputies uh, take part in uh, cops and shops and compliance checks. Uh, so we were able to, um, in our rounds throughout the county, um, check 11 businesses where we send an underage person in and uh, had them attempt to purchase alcohol. One of the businesses out of 11 did uh, end up selling. Uh, they were, they were uh, cited. Uh, but that was something that we do year-round, uh, pretty much a couple times a month. Uh, we try to hit all area businesses. Um, I had 18 assigned cases, um, and the below are the, I it was eight, seven um, of the cases I had coached. Is there anybody in the audience that has any questions for the sheriff's office regarding any issues? Okay, that'll be the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take some new business on that over to our administrator, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. And this resolution was based on the work session that we had earlier. So I have a resolution uh, be hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to contract with Air Crime Corporation to review and analyze any utility, telecommunication, and inter internet data billings provided by Plain Township and for Air Crime Corporation to serve as a consultant with respect to those billings as defined by the attached contract. I will so move. Second. Discussion. Just as a point of clarification for anybody in the audience or anybody who decides to watch the meeting later on YouTube. Um, this is done to analyze our bills to see if there's any areas that we may have been overcharged or overpaying that we weren't necessarily aware of or had a clear um, understanding of the charges. Uh, there's no fee per the engagement. Uh, the Air Bryant Corporation only recognizes financial benefit if the savings they've identified the township Excellent. So essentially, <coughs> the net positive gains here. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they don't find much, and you know we've, we've got a good staff to keep tight. But you know, hopefully for their sake of an engagement, they may find something here or there. Make sure we're tight. Anything else? I have a couple just legal things I just took a look at. Are they here? Are they no, he's locked. No. Okay. 
there's um, two things just to be aware of. One in section four under the term that somebody from the township will want to document 100 days before the end of the term because if you don't stop at 90 days prior, it'll sell for the new. So somebody make sure that that date is calendar. Um, otherwise, you'll be sucked in for four years instead of two. That's number one. Number two is in section five, just so you're aware, they have a, a situation where you're to provide them with notice of your intentions regarding the recommendations they make, but they can act on those if you don't. So in other words, it's almost taken as a yes if you don't notify them, and they're going to go ahead and implement those, those recommendations, so be aware of that. That's the only thing I had with regard to, to look at, and then there are three provisions there that I typically don't like in a contract. They have a limitation of liability in section 11. They have a choice of law venue, which puts it in Pennsylvania in section 12, and they have an arbitration provision in 13. Um, I don't know how they feel if you strike through those or how particular they are about that, but as your counsel, I don't like it. 11, 12, 13, there's no reason we can't send it back for yeah. yeah. March. And then if they want to talk about it, we can. Yeah. That would be my recommendation. Yeah, let's do that. Further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Salo? Yes. And we'll take us to the fiscal officer's report. Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a request for resolution to authorize the payment of pending warrants in the amount of $818,346.34. I'll also move for a pay. Second discussion, just a point of clarification, this is typically larger than what our normal period is, but this actually includes our payment for paving the road reverse oh, area. So, yeah, that's why this is a little higher than normal. No further discussion and roll call, please. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal officer number two is a request for resolution to authorize the payment of regular payroll in an amount not to exceed 250000 So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal officer number three is a request for resolution to authorize the payment for the following medical claims as provided by all care. So moved. Very pay. I'll second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number four is the investment report. Anybody's got any questions? See tell see tell afterwards. Okay. Fiscal officer number five is the bank reconciliation for the month of June. Fiscal officer number six is a request for resolution to authorize the following transfers. I'll move on. Fiscal officer six. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number seven is a request for resolution to request an additional amended certificate of estimated resources from the Stark County Auditor for $207,496.89. And so moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. And fiscal officer number eight is a request for resolution to authorize a refund as follows for overpayments for emergency medical services as requested by Ohio Billing. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. And that concludes the fiscal officer's report. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. It's going to take us to our administrator, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. I did want to say thanks to Mr. Wolf. He has been attending our staff meetings and at each staff meeting doing some uh, training for all the department heads, which has been um, 
very helpful. So um, thank you on behalf of the department heads. You're welcome. Um, item number one is a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to allow the Plain Township Fire Department to utilize the following four deadline share vehicles for stabilization and extrication training at the fire training facility. They are vehicles 7646, Crown Vic with 161,743 miles, 7656 with 134,735 miles, 7654 with 172 and 5 miles, and 7657 with 128,987 miles. He further resolved that when the vehicles are no longer needed for training, that Thorough Hire Revised Code Section 50510A provides that the Board of Trustees may sell or dispose of the property at a private sale or at a recycling center if the Board determines that the property is no longer needed and the value of the property is less than $2,500. And whereas the township has accumulated scrap metal, which it no longer needs, be it hereby resolved that the Plain Township Board of Trustees start in Ohio that the said scrap metal be sold. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes, uh, long resolution, but these four vehicles were unsafe to put in the auction um, due to um, them being so very old, unsafe to drive. At that point, they were no longer in rotation. Um, they were going to just be scrapped, um, but the um, fire department asked if they could use them um, for stabilization, extrication training. It's a great opportunity to have four vehicles, which whether if you scrap them in whole or if you scrap them after they've done training, we're gonna get the exact same amount of money. Um, better to use them to let these guys train in a situation that you don't get a lot of um, training in. So um, that's <coughs> what this resolution is allowing for. It's the best use of these vehicles and then they will be scrapped. Further discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. And that's the end of the administrator report. It's going to take the fire department to see if we can get through the first item here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is to uh, resolution to extend the offer of employment to Kyle Albert, Patrick Martinez, Daniel Ventura, Benjamin Razor, Joseph Thiel, Cameron Martin, Aaron Kopp for the position of career firefighter paramedic probation. Probationary contingent upon the successful completion of the township's medical, physical, and drug screen. I will so move. I'll second. Discussion is point of clarity. These additional bodies are being hired based upon the board's uh, request to the public, their approval, and commitment to add additional bodies on to further improve response time. Some of that due to the fact of increased build out within the town township. Commercial That's correct. investments and so forth. Is there anything else we should put the represent just for the sake? No, no. You know, we, in the last six weeks we've been going testing, evaluation, skill tests, written tests, and interviews, background checks, and uh, we're all good to go with these uh, this, uh, the gentleman here. So, uh, and, and you're right, Mr. Oz, that uh, based on our request last year for the and and uh, considers the point on the long as the voting on that and proving that. Uh, this is the first step of the promise to bring in uh, six additional firefighter permittees to the township and uh, looking to do it some more in the next few years. Okay. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Stabo? Yes. Tonight I'm presenting the 2017 proposed alternative tax budget. Um, everyone should have a copy in front of them. Um, for this meeting, it's more of a review, or if you have any questions, we don't have to approve it until the next trustee meeting. So if you have questions tonight or any questions before the next meeting, feel free to contact me or anyone in the fiscal office. 
And in November, uh, when we do the permanent budget, we're going to do it a little different. We're going to have work sessions with each department where they'll review their budget for their department line by line at a more thorough type basis at that point once it's more finalized. So the budget, the budget's up over prior years and the public should be aware of that for the sake of given additional resources that we've been entrusted with in both road and fire. So it's going to increasing our road paving miles by 100 plus percent um, to adding the seven bodies on plus some additional. So that's the reason when you're looking going, okay, gosh, the budget has increased. What's, go what's going on here? proportionate with some of the resources as well um, under Mr. Wolf's direction of this box we've got to establish the uh, capital accounts and so forth and some of those are really meant for longer term purchases where essentially the board can set the money aside and accumulate it. So say you know a ladder truck ladder truck was what cheap about a million dollars million dollars I mean, that takes some time to accumulate that, but it allows the board to forego having to you know, borrow money and pay interest on no when we know that those resources are coming over time and the equipment that we have has planned life cycles that are still within the wall when they be at the end of. So, um, it's always it. I mean, it's pretty easy to get, get through. I don't know. Nothing glaring. Our allergy yeah, continues to projectively go down. But, you know, nothing, with, nothing we control here. No, I think we estimate even more conservatively so that we tend to get a little more than we thought of working with Tom. We tend to be a little more conservative. So if we cut, you know, so we just budget conservatively. We do. I can commend you on your office for doing such a great job. Thank you. This is being your first, your first one, especially what, five months, five months, four or five months in. Keeping your heart around everything else. Good work. Anybody have any questions at the immediate time? Otherwise, we'll. Yes, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, well, before I go for the discussion, that I'll let your mouse move in so you can close out the. Tax budget hearing. I'll yeah. second. Do we, do we need four more? No. No, that's not going to We're stalling the budget. We say it's a We'll reconvene for our regular meeting for the trustees here at 6 18. And we'll pick back up our fire department, Chief Snyder. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number two is a resolution to authorize the state required medical physical payments for fire department candidates. Mercy Works Health and Safety Services not to exceed three thousand dollars. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas. Yes. Mr. Lino. Yes. Mr. Sabo. Yes. And uh, next item number three is a resolution to authorize the purchase of payment for uniform clothing and sewing of name, logos, uh, colors, and embroidery, and not to exceed five thousand. I will so move. Second. Discussion. Chief. This 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 is specific for the new. Well, so we're, we're, we're going to be transitioning from all the firefighters. Okay. You know, so uh, we're going to buy some additional ones uh, this year, and then we're going to transition through the next couple of years to get through them. So this will be a, an embroidered shirt, a button shirt. It's, it's actually got stamps on it, so they're out bars with fire retardant, fire so the uh, uniforms will be wearing. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Harrison and Cleveland are Kansas City's water is putting a new water line in. 
there will be some road closures, which I ran through with the Sheriff's Department and the Fire Department um, and the schools, because this will be probably until the end of September. Um, they will, we will be on site for pavement restorations um, on this project. Is that just to repair old lines, or are they upgrades uh, uh, to bigger lines? All new lines. They're moving it from the east uh, northbound lane to the southbound lane. So, similar to what they did in that. that and item number two is uh, we're having an OVI checkpoint this Friday. We're working it with the sheriff's office on the east end. Station four, station, uh, what time? What time is that? So starts at six. All right. Again, about 1,800 hours, and we'll finish up about 2,300 hours. So six okay. feet through another feet. Tons of money in concessions alone. 
last year they played at Weiss Park, which is over there in Canyon. You guys don't know over there by on Harbor. And they played at Willie, the new softball fields. I talked to the guy who ran the tournament. He'd be interested in coming to Diamond Park and leaving Weiss Park behind. And that could bring in some revenue for the park. I mean, my, uh, my goal is to bring make that park better for my kids and for kids that play after my kid plays. So. As I've talked to Mr. Fox in the past, to answer the question, simply put, we can make it work within the parameters of what we have to offer, um, depending upon what age groups' needs have. And, and he, Donnie knows our fields like the back of his hand. He knows what our dimensions are, what we can and can't handle traffic-wise. He knows that we're up to the task as far as the manpower. Um, we just can't hold more than we have. I mean, like we said, we have, we have five fields of different dimensions, and we certainly can fill those morning, noon, and night for as long as they'd like to fill them. That is not an issue, as I mean, we've spoken yeah, in the past about. Um, but I wouldn't oversell our fields and say we have more than we have either. <coughs> what we look at is for 50, 70, and you know the dimensions. 50, 70, we could hold one, maybe two fields for it. Right. Yeah. The more fields you hold, the more money you can make. And I mean, it's all a kind of thing. I don't know how hard it would be to I amend mean, them on the fields. But my measurements, I think anything's possible there. Because I've been on about every field that's there right now. But it's all depending on what you guys are willing to do to make it work. So, I really have nothing else. I just really want to introduce myself and kind of get to know the people who I'm paying for the fields. So, <laughs> I do appreciate everything you guys do for the fields. They're fantastic. The kids love them. Everybody comes and compliments your field. So. Thank you very much. Well, Donnie, thank, thanks for what you bring us to the township. I'm trying. As far as opportunity, I mean, I know sometimes the uh, the out the and the effort. It's a year-round project for me. Yeah. That I don't get paid to do so. And sometimes dealing with the parental politics are a lot a lot more severe than any type of what we view as politics. Yeah, I have no idea. All the comments I get, yes. everybody <laughs> raves about yeah. those fields in that program. Right. We try. I mean, we do our best, and like I said, we're just trying to keep growing bigger and bigger to give the kids a better opportunity. The board's committed to doing, you know, what's in the best interest, obviously. So, mm -hmm. of the top, which obviously means residents and the individuals that are using those fields. So, as those opportunities come up, continue to channel it all through Rob. And right. We'll make sure we're actively engaged. And you know, as long as it makes sense, you know, this board's been pretty flexible. Overall, so you know, right. so I appreciate everything. You said the fields are fantastic. I don't want to have to go anywhere else. So this is this is my home. Yeah. I actually bought a house right behind it. So he did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to hear. That. No, that's all I have. That's, that's all. Awesome. Nothing on our lawnmower after. We'll take us to communications. I'll turn that over to uh, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. I'll take for the uh, first communication. And it's uh, to Mr. Hawes, and it's uh, in regards to the board, and it reads, and it's from Tracy Bohr, who was at our last meeting, um, and it reads, Mr. Hawes, I wanted to thank you and all of the trustees and the board again for listening to my neighbors and my concerns. Your team has always been there for us residents, and I feel we can take any concerns to you for any answer. A very, a very big thanks to all of you. You all do a wonderful job representing Plain Township. It is noticed. My neighbor, Mrs. Strohmeyer, being elderly, needed direction for her concerns, so I knew you and the board would be the best ones to go to for a solution. Thank you all again, Tracy Roar. All right. And then the second one um, is to all the firefighters and paramedics. So I'm going to ask that Chief um, Snyder read that. Thank you. I've actually received two letters from, from uh, Linda Hamilton's lady's name. She addressed one to that, she must sell them one to the department of paramedics. The letter reads, uh, this letter is for all of you who put on your uniforms and turn out daily. Uh, to, say and to save and protect all of us, this is a time of turmoil in our beloved country. There are so many people filled with hatred and want to hurt and destroy the very people who have dedicated their lives. Um, I'm sorry? Just to save us here. Dedicate our lives and to save and protect us. When that alarm sounds and all the calls come in, you do not stop and 
think as to whether you should go to this call or not. No, you jump into your uniforms, run to the fire trucks, and, and head out to answer. answer the call. You do not know what, you're, what you will find if you uh, not find if you will be safe, or even if you will return to the station after this call is over. You may very often are you are very often treated ba badly without respect from your from the very people you are trying to save and help. Oh, you are trying to save and help. I know that. I apologize because I'm just trying to read through a writing. I know that there is a there's an exception to this, but not often enough. You do not you don't read in the newspaper about all the times you jump up, left your meals to go out and on and call. Risk your lives and been treated with disrespect. You are called out for many things, not just fires and accidents. I know this very well as several of you have been to my home to help my to help me and I've fallen and been unable to get up. You're always you're always so kind and helpful. You're so you, know, you are such a ray of sunshine to the to this senior lady, and I love you all for it. I'm the sister of a great firefighter who now is retired from the Phoenix Fire Department. I know firsthand about how all of you are so dedicated and willing to put your own lives on the on danger for us. You have to be a very special person to do your job. It is a life of dedication to help serve and save others, regardless of race, color, or creed. It is not enough. It's not a job, but a life dedication to others. I want you to know that I, for one, promise to daily pray for you also for your loved ones waiting at home. Uh, let's please for your safe return. Thank you. I love each of you and every one of your one of you. May God watch over and keep you in his loving care. Sincerely from the hand. Especially one that was handwritten. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah that's the other thing. Never hardly see that anymore. No. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. There's nothing else in our communications that does bring us to a portion of the meeting public speaks. If there's anybody in the audience that wishes to address the Board of Trustees on any specific subject, you'll have to state your name and address for the fiscal officer and this will give you three minutes three minutes. So we want to see you. I'd like to tell you how much we thank you uh, for all of your work for us in the township. We're glad we live in the township. And uh, it's been very good to see all the help that you've given us. This is my son, Daniel Ray Snyder. Uh, he lives at 2709 33rd Street Northeast in the township. And I live diagonally across from him at 2800 33rd Street Northeast. We're having an issue uh, with traffic and parking on our street. Uh, my son has several disabilities, and when people park on both sides of the street, in front of his house and my house, and in that area where the stop sign is, it makes, him very, it, makes it very difficult for him to be able to see across the street safely. So we were wondering if it was possible that the road department could please put a sign on, on our road uh, would, where it would be notifying the traffic that there should not be parking there uh, due to his disabilities. He has a visual disability and attention deficit disorder. So he's not always uh, aware of the traffic coming. And we have problems with uh, buses and vans and uh, all kinds of larger vehicles that come down that road to the stop sign that are, are not following the, the traffic rules as far as speed and they don't always stop at the stop sign either. But, so this is, a, I think, uh, a dangerous place, especially for my son. 
So we're wondering if maybe a sign could be posted there. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually, uh, she called my office earlier this week, last week, and talked to my secretary. She informed me of it that she was coming to a meeting tonight. And I actually have two visually, visual impaired resident signs ordered. Um, it could take a little while. But the no parking would have to come from the board. Um, you'd have to pass a resolution that goes no parking on the box. It's 50% of the residents' uh, requests that the board usually does. Um, I guess Lieutenant Springer can answer questions about speeding and rental stops. I can't host the signs you know, for visually impaired residents on both ends of that block. So, what I'm here on in other areas, we can, we've already taken action on part of the request. Yes. From a signage aspect, and that's the visually impaired. It's the no parking portion that sounds like it may present. That's the only thing that's the challenge is due to. I mean, is there any, do you have anything that speaks to your It's just that our typical procedure is the, the petition process that's been used to do the no parking. And I think we've always been. Careful, as Trustee Lino just alluded to, when when some of those folks, that's where they end up parking their their vehicles. And we want to look certainly from a safety aspect as well as to what kind of room we've got there and, and those kinds of things. That's something that we've typically not initiated on our own. In a in a is it a residential? It's a residential neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the proposed no parking would be from the edge of Daniel's uh, property at 2709 to the stop sign. So it's not a very large oh, area. Oh, so I see. already have the stop sign there. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Is he on the corner? He, yes, yes. Exactly. He has it though. Okay. Right his own corner. property? Yes. yes. It's it's essentially that. Oh, man. I mean, there's already technically yeah. state law that you're not supposed to park within mm -hmm. X number of feet. 30 feet from the stop sign. All right. So the third stop sign. The difficulty is the vacant lot of Daniel's property mm -hmm. is next to the stop sign. However, we need that extended to the next neighbor's driveway, okay. so it's just a little bit farther than the stop sign. We're not on, if we're not on neighbors, we're, and it's on his property, and, and this, this cause is absolutely 100% for, I'm for, then this is almost a no brain. His property, stop sign, I mean, not on other, it's not a neighbor's. Right. It's almost one that... And right. The, 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 that street continues for a ways. It does. Yeah. But we're on the corner of Morris and uh, 33rd Street okay. Northeast. So it's only about uh, from this uh, distance of the stop sign to where it's usually uh, there's no parking because of the stop sign. Just extend that one more. Uh, um, one more um, area. If you don't mind, I'm going to meet with Joe tomorrow on the residence side. We could go just, just go look at that one and make sure. And we can get back with that and make sure that yeah, we, we could do a resolution. In that. It's usually when you're part, putting no parking on other people. That's yeah. where it becomes yeah. a problem. Yeah. Well, it's his property. Yeah. This is his property, so we can do his property from there to the corner. And we'll take a look at it. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. And, and you can also appreciate the visibility sign to you as well, there. Yeah, I can't promise when no those signs will come. That's okay, but if we know it's coming, that will be a help. We will, we will, if, if the board will do a resolution on our next meeting, and those will get up by my department right away. So um, we'll we appreciate that. And Joe, where would those signs go up at? On the two sides that you're making, go. We'll put them on each corner of each block of that block, so you know, come the right direction. on that block, yeah. both directions. Yeah. No, no, that. Both directions? Yeah, we'll put them on both in both directions. Well, the difficulty with my new neighbors, I live diagonally across the street from Daniel is that they have a lot of vehicles and they have only room in their driveway for three vehicles. And they have room on their front grass for two vehicles. But they've been parking on the corner, down by our other neighbor, and on both sides of the street. So we don't really want to inhibit their social life or whatever. But so if it's just in front of Daniel's house that the signs are put up, that's sufficient for us. We'll, we'll look it over. We'll look yeah, we'll look it. We appreciate that very much. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the area was put out for extra patrol by a supervisor already. So. And, I'm sorry. Okay. We, I sent a text to our shift supervisor. He's putting out for extra patrol right now for the stop signs. Great, great. The school's going to start here in a few weeks. Great. Thank you. Does anybody else that wishes to address the Board of Trustees? Okay. Just state your name and your address for the public record. Dennis Warner, Georgiana Warner on Enfield Avenue. I'm sorry, Port uh, Road. Enfield. So my wife and I are here to bring attention to um, the fact that the only protection provided in the Plain Township Zoning Resolution for schools that we could find only includes adult entertainment and billboards. Um, there seems to be nothing that addresses the proximity to a school um, a, near a 777 or a skill parlor, a vapor store, a bar, or anything. The only protections seem to be adult entertainment and billboards. Those are the only things that we see addressed. Because of this, um, directly across from Avondale Elementary School, across from the playground, a 777 parlor called the Players Club is slated to open, um, and it's also around the corner from St. Michael Elementary and Middle School. Now, my wife and I drove around that area, and we found several other uh, 777 skill parlors within a half a mile of Avondale Elementary on Plain Township property, essentially creating a district. There will be eight once the Players Club opens. We, what we observe from the other establishments in that area are establishments that are open 24 hours, have tinted windows that make them black boxes that, you can, that can only be viewed outward, have locked doors that say members only, 18 years uh, or older, and some with security guards. This is not the atmosphere that we expect for our children and across the street for our children's school. It's not what we expect in our area for our property values and we're kind of wondering what to do from here and how did we get here instead of being proactive. Well, the, first, the first thing, and I'm not sure if I spoke more directly, I know I got one call on this and this is an issue for your state legislature, Representative Schering and Old Slater, along with, that they're really going to have township level, we have no legal means to prohibit or forbid these things. I will tell you on public record, and I don't care who owns the things, if I, if I can get rid of those, payday lending, and so forth, I so, so I, no, I, I, no, I, I wait for one. No I wait for one to be gone, but by state statute, there's a limited home rule township, how the state has money, we have absolutely zero ability to ban or prohibit them. What the township did, Eric, was it a year and a half, maybe two, I think it's maybe even been over two years, years ago. Yeah. In order to try to deter some of this activity as much as we could, we assessed heavy, heavy annual fees on them per terminal of whole nine yards. And at the point when we did that initially, we probably got two thirds of them to close off and just disappear because a lot of them weren't going to be able to support it. So locally, that was really the only kind of we had to apply pressure. Unfortunately, there are still some of these that are around that they're happily just stroking the check, stroking the check, and you know from that aspect, you know, at the township level, you know they have to continue to be compliant with you know our fire our fire code which our inspectors are in there regularly and typically when they go in either our zoning director or our zoning inspector are going in as well but i mean from a township aspect there's nothing else we can change zoning wise um i know the individual i spoke to was earlier this week or the tail end of last week i had indicated it's really going to have to put put the pressure and gain the traction with representative Olslager insuring. I did talk with the school superintendent today because I had notified Ms. Campbell of it. You know, he's got he's got the same concern. He's aware of what the state law is. And I know it's frustrating on your guys' end to come here and sit here and have us tell you that there's legally nothing we can do, but if we do something that's outside the law, well then we bring 
a liability upon the township, <laughs> which we can then be sued for not only just the township, but also indiv individuals. And I can tell you no offense, I won't open myself to personal personal liability on that, as I'm sure many, many other individuals won't. Um, in my conversation with Mr. May, given you know, concern of the playground there, the traffic, the disability, because um, I drove through there, it was again last, last weekend, yeah, the big old billboard that they wrapped said, yeah, it's a trick, it's atrocious to see. And honestly, it looks more like a, a strip club with the dark, dark, dark windows and so forth. Um, we can, outside of our board, you know, trying to collaboratively draft a letter in conjunction with the school to push down to the state and see what traction we can get. I mean, even quite frankly, our law enforcement's hands are tied on these things, you know, as a whole, when you look at the crime stats in the whole nine yards, there's not a lot of activity there that typically justifies being able to even ban it. I think the last thing that happened in the city slash the township border would have been out on 62 in the old uh, car dealership where u Hall is. I think it probably goes back every bit of two years, year and a half, maybe two and a half years where they, they went in there was some shooting activity, but... Well, well, two things. We didn't reference crime. We didn't yeah. say that oh, there was a high level of crime there. We're talking about what should be, should represent the values within the community. Okay, and then I guess my question to you is, what you're conveying to me, which I'm unaware is, you're telling me that Plain Township has its hands tied in the, its zoning resolutions around schools. Is that correct? Like you no, what I'm saying is, as far as trying to control anything, anything but that's, that's, as far as skill, the skills games and stuff? Around schools, does Plain Township have its hands tied around what it can zone, how it can zone, what that, can be around that, that schools? Build, that building and that business based upon zoning so, so context and error, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not too, we can't take it down to that level where we can line item out and prohibit. If it's, you, if prohibit it's business, you prohibit adult, you pro, it's, it's, you know, you prohibit use, call out adult entertainment and you have other things that you can line itemize. So to me it seems like you can do that unless you're telling me you leave how is is that at a state level that adult entertainment? Is that a state level? That one's been fought through the court system for years and they finally came up with a Supreme Court ruling that said basically what their solution was, you can put it places. And what everybody does is they put it in an industrial district. Sure. So right. it's not next to a school. So it's not right. next to a, I don't I'm not aware that that's been tried with skills games, but I'll look. Okay, because our issue here is school zoning. Sure. All right. Uh, the district, it's, the fact that there's seven within half a mile, okay, but we're talking school. What can be directly what, across from the school? What's your district zoned over there with the school? Are you in a residential district? In R1, do you know? Yeah, he's R1. He's R1. He lives by me. I'm on the phone. I know. Oh, okay. I don't know. So you're in an R1 current that butts up against the For the R1. R1. zoning? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. butts right up against the commercial corridor. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and it's it's an unusual situation. A lot of the right. elementary schools are in residential areas, and this is this is not an issue. That school is right houses. here. No, right. Why don't you why don't you let me take a look at whether they've tried the I2 stuff? I don't I'm not aware that they have. Well, I think the grandfather. Oh, I well, they would be. I wouldn't want it. I know we looked at it before and there was some some issue with the way the state law is written for these things because they fought it all the way up to the House Supreme Court and back, whether this was gambling or not. That was the big fight. Right, and but I'd, so, I'd be interested in, in, in to know: Are we the only community? No other, every other community allows these in the state of Ohio. Is that mm -hmm. they're legally yeah, have to yeah. allow? Yeah. Jackson Township and they have no has school one zoning on, on Wales Road, which is across from the high school and middle school and, and elementary school, and it's, it's they're in every community, unfortunately. Well, again, our main issue here is across from an elementary school, yeah. what can be there, and whether it's even something like, a, a, you know, is there a bar, a vapor store, or anything that, you know, we don't want to convey those standards to our to children, not judging or not saying adult-wise what, what happens over, um, you know, yeah. for, for adults, but with, within a school or near a school. Okay. Um, so, okay. All right, if you could look into that or, or you know, or even any pressure that we could apply sure. at the state level or whatever. Um, yeah.
has parts of his own. I definitely think immediately outside of what this board outside of what this board does, you still need to contact. And then the other well is, to help push it because sure. simply getting it from the board the board I'm gonna tell you yeah, care to care probably a little more weight, but there's still power in num numbers. Um, to hear from more than one one source. So and so one of the things that came up in our conversation um, through the PTO uh, with the face through the Facebook through other parents was that there used to be a privacy, more of a privacy fence around Avondale. The um, trees lined up around the, the fence so that at least there's some sort of block of view to the 777 and into the school playground. I mean, if you can't control well, that would, your zoning. Some of that would ultimately. I mean, trees and stuff like that fall, would fall on the school that technically owns the property, and then two, any HOA restrictions. I mean, we can't require a number of plantings along that, especially with the fact, given road right of ways and so forth, where there's going to be utility easements. It could have been somewhere maybe the school didn't even, and I'm making some assumptions here, so for the sake of the record. The school may have said, hey, we didn't want them to go, but a utility company comes through and says, well, we've got an easement or a right away here, and we're going to clear it all out because our liability knocking out power and services exceeds any benefit. And even at that point, the school may go, what, what, what do we do? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's something they should be looking at. And, and I will say, I don't know how, we, how we're looking I can tell. I guarantee there's right away, right, right through every road, right through every roadway there. You know how far back each utility company has. That'd be something. I had through the public utilities commission. This state route. Yeah, state route. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All I know is that in Plain Township, where I grew up, I drive Sunday to church, and that I know we're the only place that has a family grocery store and an adult bookstore right next to it, and a 777 right next to it. The family grocery store that my daughter goes to with my um, or with my mother. You know, so there seems to be something off with zoning, whether it's at a state level or a local level, that we have family things being mixed in with more 18 year olds, 18 year and older plate establishments. They they don't need to be next to each other. And if it's at a state level, then we'll take that there. If it's anything that can be controlled here, I strongly suggest that you look inward and try to figure that out. That's all. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else in the crowd that intends to address the Board of Trustees with? Yeah. yeah. I'm Robert, Robert Warren, 2741 Orchard Park Street. And I'm just here in support of these two individuals and what was just discussed. So I'm the second person here uh, just in support of that. Do we have any, anyone else that wishes to address the board? <coughs> okay, that'll close our uh, public space. Takes us concerns of trustees. Is there anything that my fellow trustees has? I just would like to thank Lisa for if you saw the flower arrangements and the flower pots in front of our administration building here. I thought they looked very nice. I thought she did a very nice job on that. I just would like to thank her for putting those together and that nice look that it gives her a little softer. Yeah, a little softer. Concerns of the fiscal officer, Mr. Wolf? Uh, no concerns. Okay. That will take us to the approval of minutes, and I'm going to move on the July 5th special meeting. I'll second that one. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Salo? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. I'm going to move on approval of minutes for July 12, 2016, the regular meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Salo? Abstain. Mr. Hawes? Yes. That's right. <laughs> we do have a need for executive session, so be it hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to adjourn the executive session at 6.54 p.m. from this regular meeting is authorized under Ohio Revised Code 121.22G for the purpose and consideration of 1B, employment of a public employer official, 1F, compensation of a public employer official, 3, conference with the law director or other retained counsel concerning pending or imminent court action. Second. Discussion? 
roll call. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. 